all I wanted to do was anything but World of Warcraft, which is what I'd worked on previously. The test was asking for uh, someone who could draw something for a realistic first-person shooter, and um, there were implications on the test that was implying a Starship Troopers kind of thing, and I was, I was thinking to myself, oh man, that's totally what I want to do, man. I, I'm so geared up for this. At, at the time, Sony didn't really have like a pr premiere, like, you know, gangbusters uh, FPS hit, so we were thinking, you know, we were just like, we had lunch and we were like, what if, you know, could that be us? And we were starting to brainstorm. We get together and we brainstorm frequently about what the story could be, uh, what the kind of the gist of the game was. I think very early on we decided though it was clearly about aliens. In, in the original story it was all about time travel. Right, and I was gonna say it was a bit, kind of a, a big space op, more yeah. of like a science fiction, out in outer space space opera kind of thing, right? Yeah. And there was this other game called Halo or something that uh, <laughs> seemed kind of similar at that the time. That one was more of a romantic comedy, so <laughs> I think we had a distinction. And that one scene from Starship Troopers was kind of what inspired us from the beginning. With that, that one scene where like a, a thousand enemies are coming over the sand dunes and you're like, whoa, like what, what if you could do that in FPS? So that was, you know, that's not really, that's not a world or a hook or anything, but that was kind of like our idea of, of what if we could somehow kind of get that kind of quantity, that kind of... Uh, there's that kind of spectacle into an FPS. A lot of people here at the company felt it wasn't grounded. Like it doesn't, there wasn't a whole lot of, I don't know, this, there wasn't a good foundation for the story. So yeah, time travel, traveling, going to meteors that had big wormholes in them. It, it didn't give Just players anything soft. to hold on to. Yeah. yeah, you can't really connect as much. Exactly. When, when did you guys decide to do with the 1950s instead of the, like the alternate history instead of going like contemporary times or something like that? Well, it started out as World War One. Yeah, okay. it was, yeah. yeah. And, there and were biplanes when I first showed up. <laughs> And then I think we realized that it was going to be much. It was going to be hard to sell that one too, because World War One is kind of an out there concept, and the weapons weren't as cool. The the science fiction at the time, there wasn't any resistance in War of the Worlds. It was really by by luck and by act of God that these guys won. Whereas um, if you look at more of the from World War Two on, people got to mount a resistance. Right, more know? of a guerrilla warfare yeah. and, and fighting back. Yeah, totally. As the idea was that if the chimera started in Russia and spread across the uh, Asia and then across Europe, Britain would be probably be the last place that they'd hit simply because they'd have to cross the English Channel and we were presupposing that the chimera weren't very good with water. And Britain had had time also to, to create a great defense network and we're probably going to be more likely to hold out than any other country. Well, they started out as a uh, lizard-ish race, uh, big They're lizards kind of with tails. Geiger-esque for a while there, weren't they? Were they? I can't. I, yeah, I remember the tentacles. I mean, some of the some of the early drawings. It was really early. It was like kind of Geiger-inspired. The idea was that it was very lizard-like, but now we had this kind of skull head. What ended up happening was that it looked very duck-like, and and it 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 drove me nuts. And so. Uh, and I still see thing. that image all over the place. By oh, the yeah, way, yeah. that first that first chimera with his mouth open, right? It, it, it was it was that, yeah. and also what was um, prominently featured in that was was the gun, and um, that drove me nuts too. So literally at lunch, I just started, you know, I took the chimera head and I started redrawing it, and then I took the gun and I totally redrew it and and said, oh, could could we rough it out? Maybe we could show it to Ted. Maybe we can like. You know, at the, at the next iteration, like get this, get this in, and that's how the carbine came out, and sort of the the, the new Chimera head. It was just me, just frustrated at at, at this at this image. Yeah, I remember we did a ton of storyboards, and and um, the environment uh, concept artist did some great sort of Top Gun looking aircraft carrier things. That was like, oh, they're never gonna see it. But our intention originally was to start the story on the aircraft carrier and explain how Hale uh, starts off right before the invasion and has to navigate through the ship, learning about the background on the way, and then ends up getting into a VTOL and, and leaving. But we couldn't get that level done, so we ended up just using it for a cinematic. I it ended think. up being a major problem though, because that was, all of our training was in there. Ah, that's true. Yes, that's right. And, and it was like it was a big storytelling step piece. So a lot of the, the story we we're going to tell was, was just going to come across in dialogue through here. And so when, when we cut that, we lost our training and kind of our introduction to the character. <laughs> so we had to just find other solutions to all of that. I remember thinking, I don't know if we're going to be able to get this out on time, but we will. We will somehow do it. And I think everybody kind of felt that way. We we just knew that we needed to get it done because it was such a great opportunity. I think the the last six to eight weeks or so in particular, the two of you guys and Mark 
Cerny were playing the games a lot, and yeah. we were just getting a, like a lot of feedback of you know. That's right. We went uh, through all the setups, wrote did, yeah, lists like, and lists of things that needed. You guys to be did what finished. amounted to like a yeah. complete rescripting of the game in like two months. Resistance six one five one three asked about uh, you know some cut weapons or cut ga uh, cut gadgets. <laughs> That's the grappling hook, right? Yeah, the grappler. <laughs> I remember one of the reasons we cut it, two reasons. One, it became an uber weapon so that if you used it against any enemy, you'd, it would be an auto kill. And since it had no ammo, you pretty much could use it on everybody. And the second one was we were worried about people dragging physics objects uh, into awkward places and either getting it stuck. It a lot, a lot of problems. Yeah. I think if we had like three more months, we could have gotten it in. But I mean, as it, as it was, it was, you know, this is a launch title and we were so close to the wire just getting everything done. Just... We, we needed to find, we needed to focus on a few things that were going to be the best, and that one was just like, okay, we, we can basically cut a thousand bugs right now if, if, we, if we don't have this. So any other, I think it kind of like wraps up the question list, but any other like thoughts or you know, stories, uh, funny times, sad times, stressful times that you guys remembered and, you know, we didn't talk about? As we saw more and more of the launch titles and realized that Resistance really did stand out as something unique, it was it was cool. And, and it, it made all the pain worth it. I remember especially those, those like, from Manchester for the next, like, three levels, just kind of, like, just amazing experience. Like, I, I couldn't put it down as I was playing it. I'd played it, like, a hundred times. I think we said it's like, oh, but, you know, we wanted to get in this and this and this that didn't get in and, and that kind of thing. And, and yeah, I, th I think I was a little bit bummed, but it's funny now going back and playing it. Uh, I played it, replayed it a year or a year and a half ago. It's a really fun game, and it still stands up, I think, really well.